Soichiro Honda started the Eastern Sea Precision Machine Company to build piston rings in 1937, a company whose primary business would end up being as a supplier to Toyota. But the factories would be destroyed in World War II, and what could be salvaged would be sold to Toyota. At which point, Honda would start motorizing bicycles using Army surplus to Hatsu generator engines. And once the supply of those engines ran out, he would begin manufacturing his own, the two-stroke A-type bicycle accessory engine of 1947, leading to the creation of the Honda Motor Company. And in 1949, the first complete motorcycle, the D-type Dream, a 100cc three-horsepower two-stroke bike with a two-speed semi-automatic. Despite the semi-automatic being unpopular and some early distributor conflicts, in the sense that distributors were supposedly scavenging the engines off of them and putting them on other products, Honda moved quickly to fix these issues and by 1955 was Japan's largest motorcycle manufacturer. Soon, the Dream 300 was being sold in the U.S. around 1959, followed in 1961 by the introduction of the sportier CB series, or Superhawk. But it would be the smaller Super Cub, or trail bike, that would gain Honda popularity in America, helped along by advertising that suggested motorcycles weren't just for bad boys, even inspiring the Beach Boys to write the song Little Honda, that was almost immediately covered by the Hondells. About the same time, Honda would move to producing cars, with the T360 pickup and S500 sports car in 1963. The two vehicles shared most chassis components, although the pickups were mid-engine, with the engine mounted under the seat. Their dual overhead cam inline four design was also shared, with there being a later T500 version of the pickup. And the motorcycle heritage was pretty obvious, with early models even being chain drive. The S500 would grow to the S600 and then the S800 before being discontinued in 1970. These would be followed up in 1967 by the N360 family hatchback, which would come to the U.S. two years later as the N600. It was 122 inches long on a 79-inch wheelbase and weighed under 1,300 pounds. And around the same time, they would introduce the bigger 1300. And 1970 saw the introduction of a sports coupe version of the N600 as the Z600. But these small cars would effectively be replaced in 1972 by the Civic. It started just under $2,000, wheelbase was up 8 inches from the N-Series, and the engine was twice as big at 1.2 liters. It would become one of the best-selling Japanese cars in America, selling over 900,000 by decade's end, in spite of a forced recall for premature rust. In 1973, Honda introduced the Hondamatic semi-automatic transmission that would be used on both its cars and its motorcycles. The Civic would get an optional compound vortex controlled combustion, or CVCC, 1500, and a 5-speed for 1975. The advanced cylinder head design allowed it to meet emissions regulations using leaded fuel without a catalytic converter. The following year, their bigger model would be replaced by the Accord, coming to the U.S. for 1977. Developing the basic Civic design into a larger car and sharing the Civic CVCC engine. The 94-inch wheelbase was 7 inches longer than the Civic, and soon the three-door hatchback was joined by a four-door notchback. Starting at about $4,000, it was one of the best-equipped Japanese cars sold in America, and the LX version even added air conditioning. And soon, Honda would be creating global distribution networks that focused on higher-content cars. A sporty model returned in 1979 with the new Prelude. It was a coupe body on the dimensions of a four-door Civic, using a bigger 1.6-liter single-overhead cam engine. With roughly 80 horsepower, it could top 100 miles an hour and do the quarter mile in just over 18 seconds, impressing critics with both its performance and its refinement. And a U.S. Accord factory would be established in 1980. Honda would move down market in 1981 with the smaller city, with an unusually tall cab that provided more interior space than its trim dimensions suggested, and it could be ordered with a Moto Compo fold-away trunk scooter. In fact, their line of motorcycles would also be expanding. With the introduction of the Shadow, American-style cruiser in 1983, as well as the VF series of V4-powered sports bikes. 
Like other Honda car models, the Prelude quickly moved up market, making room for a more budget-friendly sport coupe, a lighter two-seat version of the Civic called the CRX. Geared for acceleration instead of mileage, it was still quite frugal thanks to its lightweight. A sport-injected or SI version of the Civic was also offered, but not in the U.S. In 1985, they teamed up with Rover to move into the luxury car segment with the Legend, a car that would come to the U.S. a year later as the Acura Legend, and from Rover as the Sterling 827. Initially, a 189-inch long sedan on a 109-inch wheelbase, with an 150-horsepower 2.5-liter V6, soon a more powerful coupe would also be offered, followed shortly thereafter by the Integra, which was marketed very differently in different countries, although typically with some sort of sporty image, and it would also be an Acura in the U.S. By the late 80s, the Accord was one of the best-selling cars in the U.S., and the Civic was a leader in its segment as well, finally bringing the SI to the U.S. in 1989. When the luxury version of the Accord, typically sold as the Vigor or Inspire, would break away to become a separate model, and it too would find its way to the U.S. as an Acura. While the SI Prelude of 1990 was now the base model, and options included anti-lock brakes and four-wheel steering. Soon there would be a lot of changes at Honda, starting with the mid-engine NSX sports car, a more refined attempt at an exotic, initially using a 250-horsepower 3-liter V6, although it wouldn't exactly be their only mid-engine sports car at the time. The CRX would evolve into the Del Sol, they would introduce a badge-engineered Isuzu Rodeo as the Honda Passport, and a Civic-based cute ute called the CRV. They entered the minivan market with the Odyssey, an unconventional four-door van, using a name that they had previously been using on an ATV from 1977 to 1984, although they had offered a microvan since the early 70s. The previously Japan-only Ascot would be offered in Europe as their version of the Accord, a slightly smaller, more dated design, as other versions moved fully into the mid-size market. Then in 1999, the Civic-based sports cars would go away in favor of the S2000 to become one of the more competitive traditional roadsters on the market. The Insight gas-electric hybrid quickly followed, being the first to arrive in America in early 2000, technology that would soon be offered in other models. In 2001, their subcompact would come to the U.S. for the first time as the Fit, and the sporty Prelude would be discontinued. With the expanding SUV market, 2003 would see the introduction of the bigger Pilot and the boxy Element, although that would only last until 2011. In 2002, they started offering the hydrogen fuel cell FCX in very limited markets. Then in 2006, they introduced an SUV-based unibody pickup, the Ridgeline, a concept that has just recently started to gain popularity. The FCX would evolve into the Clarity for 2008, one of many models proving that Honda was still willing to step out of the norm with experimental design. But like the rest of the industry, there would continue to be an expansion of SUV models, with the CRV being one of the best sellers on the market. The Civic and Accord remain staples in the American market, and Honda continues to be Japan's leading motorcycle manufacturer, not to mention their 70 years of producing power equipment. If you want to have input on the videos I do next, check out the latest poll on my community page. And as always, don't forget to comment below and like and subscribe.